Hey everyone, welcome to That's Cakeable. I'm Janine, and this week I'm gonna show you how I made this gorgeous little flamingo cake, including that topper, which comes into play around halfway through the video, so stay tuned. And it's a heck of a lot easier than you think. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. So to make this cake, I baked two five inch round vanilla cakes split them into six even layers and then simple syrup them like I do with the majority of my cakes to make sure they stay nice and moist through the decorating process. I come in with my bread knife and I cut off the caramelization around the outside of my cake. This serves two purposes. It makes it look prettier and sometimes the board, the cake board, ends up being a bit smaller than the actual cake and if the cake is wider then it will protrude through the crumb coats of the ganache etc etc so it's better just to cut that off. I take a five inch cake board, place my first cake layer onto that board and then start filling it with some delicious strawberry buttercream to match our pink flamingo. Last one goes on top and then I go in and I tidy up those edges of the cake. Now because this is quite a tall cake, I've used some skewers just to make sure it stays secure through the entire decorating process. If you're making this for clients, don't forget to tell them that they're in there. I let my cake chill just for a little while and then I pop a little bit of white chocolate ganache on top. And I place another five inch board on the top of the cake. Now I'm using my scraper to measure up between the top and the baseboard to make sure that they're in line, nice and even, so we end up with a nice straight cake. I'm adding my crumb coat now of my white chocolate ganache, which is just a thin coat to keep those crumbs in. And because my cake was quite cold when I started that, firmed up really quickly. So I got to come straight back in and start my thicker coat of ganache. Making sure you fill up all the space between that top board and that base board. Come in with your scraper and scrape around to get a nice smooth finish. Voila. Once that's chilled, I now have to take the top off my cake board. I do that by taking a paring knife that I've dipped in boiling hot water run that under the rim of the top cake board and just pop it off. Now we have to, of course, level out the top of our cake, so I add some more white chocolate ganache. Firstly, I use my offset spatula, then I use my scraper, and I get pedantic, but I do like it to be level. Scrape off any excess that you've got around that lip. And then I take my offset spatula again and just smooth out those edges. Now I'm covering my cake in some white fondant that I've rolled out reasonably thinly, making sure to secure those top edges first so we don't pull. And it is quite a tall cake, but it works the same as most rounds. It's just a lot of fluffing out the skirt, rubbing down gradually until the entire cake is covered. Cut off the excess fondant from the bottom of the cake. And now it's time to smooth her out. I use a combination of techniques for this. I'm using my cake smoothers and then I go around the edges with both smoothers, getting those nice sharp edges. And then I use my flexi scrapers, my flexi smoothers, to do a final polish. I also use them to cut the excess off the bottom of the cake. Use the sharp edge of the smoother hitting the board and just bring it across the base of the cake and it helps lift up that excess. I let it dry for a bit and now we're going to flip it. So I've just put some baking paper on the top of my cake, a board on the top of the baking paper and as terrifying as that looks, it's not too bad. Because I want to put a watercolour effect on the base and I wanted it to be an upside down watercolour. So what I've done is I've mixed some gel food colouring with some alcohol, some vodka in this case, watered it right down and I'm just using my paintbrush, a watercolour paintbrush, to paint the base of that cake. Okay, now we're going on to our monstera leaves. 
If you've got a big, fat, wide heart shape cutter, it's perfect for this, but I didn't have one. So I rolled out some green fondant, just etched a wide heart shape into that fondant and then cut around the outside with my X-Acto. I took my Dresden tool to make a center vein and then the same Dresden tool to make the side veins. They're quite arched. They go sort of with the shape of the leaf. Continue that all the way down. And now I take my knife and at the base of every one of those veins, I cut out just a very small V shape. Leave the bottom couple alone. You just want three or four down each side. Very simple. And then I just sort of rounded those edges off with my fingers a little. And then I came back in with my Dresden tool and just made some irregular little holes all the way through the leaf. In order to place it on our cake later, we need a skewer, something to secure it with. So I placed a skewer in the center of the leaf and put that aside to dry. I ended up making two around the same size and then two very large ones that go on the front of the cake. Now to make our pretty pink flamingo, I took a piece of light pink fondant, rolled it into a ball and then rolled it into a cone shape and made more of a tip at one end for her tail. For her head, I took another piece of pink fondant, rolled that into a ball at the top that extends out into a long snake in the bottom. It's really, really very, very simple. Give it a go. Once you've got around the right size, I just wrap that neck up around the body and flatten that head out a little bit. Then I took my X-Acto knife and just sliced inwards towards the body around the neck so that it all sort of fits in neatly. Attach the neck and the head with a little bit of water to the body. And now we're on to the wing. So I take a darker piece of pink fondant and I roll that into a cone shape, which I also make a little pinch tip at the end. Flatten that out. And then I took my sugar shaper and just made a few lines in the base of the wing for the feathered effect. Sort of pushing up there to make it more 3D. Once again, just a little bit of water and attach that wing into place. Now we're going to make the little beak. I take a piece of white fondant and roll that into a cone shape. Bend the end over just slightly and then the tip goes right underneath. Slice just a tiny bit of fondant off the face of our flamingo so that the beak sits more flush and pop it on. Don't forget to flatten that out a bit too so she's all quite sort of flat at the top. Okay, so to make the main support leg, I've taken a skewer which I've dipped in a bit of water to moisten it up. And I'm just pushing some of the dark pink fondant over the top of that. And then rolling it out by sort of putting my hands together and rolling outwards. I cut the excess off the top of that skewer because we need that exposed to be able to put it into the flamingo without messing up the fondant work we've just done. just tidying up the end. Now I pre-made a hole just to make sure I was in the right position so that I didn't mess up the fondant work on that skewer. And then I just popped the flamingo leg in, attaching that with a little bit of water also. And of course I had to challenge myself and make that little flamingo knobbly knee. And that is one tiny piece of fondant that I've just attached with a tiny bit of water and used my brush to smooth that on. Now for the other leg, it's just a very thin snake of fondant rolled out and then made into a slight V shape. I then attach that to the underside of the body with a little bit of water and I attach the other side of the leg to the underside of the main support leg. Now 
Now I hand painted the detail on. I'm using a very, very fine brush, painting her eye and her eyelashes on first. I'm using Sweet Sticks Edible Art Paint in black to paint these on. It is the bomb.com for decorators. Um, I'll put a link in the description box as to where you can purchase it. And then I put her little eyebrow on, her little nostril, and then of course the black tip of her beak. This paint is great too because it dries very, very quickly. I added just the tiniest bit of petal dust to her cheeks to give her that little flush blush. And your flamingo is done. See? Simple. Now once again I was having one of those technical moments where I thought I was filming, but I wasn't. So like I said, I made the large monstera leaves and I popped them onto the front of the cake just using a little bit of water. Now I go ahead and pop the monstera toppers on, covering up the skewers with just a little bit of green fondant so that the skewers aren't visible in the final product. And then on goes the piece de resistance. Our gorgeous little snoozing pink flamingo in all her glory. So there you go, a gorgeous pink flamingo cake suitable for so many different occasions. Or just challenge yourself and give it a go. Especially that topper, I'm sure you will surprise yourself at how easy it is. Thank you so much for watching again. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell down the bottom so you don't miss out on any of my future videos which are uploaded weekly. Also, I'm more than happy to answer any questions or comments, so leave your questions, comments, etc. in the comment box below. Plus, I'll put a link in the description of where you can get the Sweet Sticks edible art paints that I use to paint my flamingo. While you're here, why don't you check out some of my other videos? And until next week, I urge you to go get your cake on. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.